Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user China Red Flag BF. Me, 25 female with my boyfriend, 31 male. Are these red flags or just adjusting to each other? Together 3 months. I'll refer to my boyfriend as Chavi. To put things into context, he comes from a powerful and wealthy family in my city, relevant later. Things started off peachy. He was always affable, pleasant and accommodating. However, I'm starting to realize certain issues which have me questioning everything. There are 8 particular incidents, so be warned, this will be long. Let's start with incident number 1. He got mad at me because he felt I wasn't appreciating an expensive present. He got me a specialized tech gadget which cost about $4,000. I was a bit surprised by it as I'd never mentioned any inclination towards this gadget. I'm not very techy and he'd never asked me about it. Also, this gadget is something that requires a lot of time and practice to use. To be honest, I was also very concerned that it had cost so much. If I had known, I would have just told him to get me something less expensive. Anyway, I still thanked him and said that I appreciated it very much. A week or so later, he asks me if I used it yet, to which I answered no but would eventually get around to it. He got upset and repeatedly asked me if I had just wasted his time and effort and money and told me that if that was the case, I should just dump the thing. Incident number 2. He blew up at me when I was at the gym at midnight. Fitness is very important to me so I always make sure to go to the gym consistently. I usually go right after work which ends at 6pm. However, sometimes life happens and I go later. One day, I went at 10.30pm. Before I left, I told him I was heading off to the gym. And he said, ok, then silence so I assumed he was doing his own thing and off I went and had a good workout. I was done around 12am, checked my phone and there were 12 missed calls from him. I immediately called him back and was met by him yelling at me, demanding to know why I hadn't been answering my phone, didn't I know what time it was, and didn't I know what sort of impression I was giving me to be around other half-naked sweaty guys this late, that he was too old to be chasing his girl around in the middle of the night etc. I was honestly shocked at this because even when we started dating I would tell him when I went to the gym, even late, and he didn't seem to have any issues. Incident number 3. He told me he didn't feel attractive or desirable when I asked if we could reschedule for one hour later. We planned to meet up on Saturday afternoon. On Friday night, he called me and we ended up talking on the phone till pretty late, around 3am. Because of that, I overslept on Saturday and woke up late. I texted him, telling him I overslept and would probably be taken an hour or so to come over. He told me that he felt I didn't seem interested in him or our relationship anymore and that he was the only enthusiastic one. I tried to tell him that it wasn't the case, I just needed some more me time. It's the weekend and my only time to sleep in. But he still told me he didn't feel loved in this relationship and that we didn't see each other enough. Context, we usually see each other one day during the work week and I spent the weekend at his place. Incident number 4. He told me I was going to get us into a fight. We were getting ice creams, we were laughing and everything was going great. We were sitting in the ice cream parlor and he playfully put his hand on my knee, which I don't mind. Then he started to move his hand higher up my thigh to which I told him to stop. I was still smiling and laughing. He didn't though and I said again, I said stop, cut it out. But he still kept going and I told him I was going to yell and I said stop loudly. Immediately the whole mood dropped and he told me that I could have gotten us into a fight. What if someone had reacted badly and attacked him? Incident number 5. He got mad when I talked to another guy. We went on a short trip recently and signed up for a tour that was 8-9 to nine hours long. On the same tour was another guy, I'll call him A, around our age who was traveling alone and Chavi and him got talking. About guy stuff, work, sports, current issues, I don't know. And they seemed to like each other really well. I was happy that Chavi had made a friend and they were getting along and I just chilled and let them be. At the end of the tour when we were heading back, I also got into a conversation with A about what he thought of the tour, what else he was going to do on this trip, etc, etc. 
Xavi kept butting into the conversation, asking me abrupt questions completely unrelated to the context of my conversation with A, so I wasn't very responsive as I was engaged in my conversation. When we got back, Xavi told me that he felt I had ignored him and was more interested in A than I was in spending time with him. He also said that if we had been back home, he would have told A to get lost, so that the two of us just spent time together. But because we were in a foreign country, if A had reacted badly and they had gotten into a fight and all of a sudden in a police station, we would be screwed because nobody knew him or his family in this place. Incident number 6. I was putting sunblock on him because he didn't want to get his hands dirty. He started by asking me to put some block on his back. I'm okay helping him with that because he can't reach it himself. And then he just told me to go on and do the rest, which I found kind of funny and princessy of him, so I did. But by the third day of our trip, I was getting tired of it and told him he just put sunblock on himself. I would help him with his back, but he could damn well do the rest on his own. He said, but my hands will get dirty. And I said, oh, so it's okay for me to get my hands dirty, but not okay for you? He made a face and said, well, this is new. I've never dated a girl like this. I still didn't do it. Incident number seven. He told me that my past bothered him. When I was younger, I was very sheltered and very religious. A few years ago, I realized that I had no clue about dating, being physically intimate, etc. As a result, I ended up hooking up casually for a while before realizing that casual isn't for me and I focused on purely dating to know someone better, without sleeping with them, and focusing on looking for lasting relationships. I was honest with Xavi about this before I met him. At the time, when I shared this with him, he seemed okay and told me that he had also done similarly when in the college phase. However, we were talking about it again recently and he told me that it's different for guys than it is for girls and that he felt that what I've done was bothersome to him. I countered that I had been honest, it was a while ago and I'm happy and comfortable with the person I am today regardless of anything in the past. And if this was an issue for him, he should not have gotten into a relationship with me. In fact, I told him that if this was something he couldn't get past, then he could go ahead and move on right away. Incident number 8. He sort of broke up with me but ended up not going through with it. When I told him that he could go ahead and move on if he couldn't get past my sexual history, he paused for a while then said, Well, I did try. I wasn't sure if this was him asking for a breakup so I asked, Does this mean we're done? And he said, I guess. He started to leave and I told him, Take care and all the best. As he was going about gathering his stuff, he kept saying things like, I'm sorry, we couldn't make it work. I did really have a good time, etc, etc. And I said, you don't have to apologize or try to make me feel better. It's fine, really. He hesitated and said, are we both sure that this is what we both want? I said to him, well, it seems like it's what you want. To which he said, no, it's not what I want. I thought it was what you wanted. To which I said, I meant that if he couldn't get past my history, he could go ahead and move on. But otherwise, I was willing to continue our relationship. We eventually ended up not breaking up, lol. After that, he told me that it bothered him that I could have let things go so easily. So, I don't know. Am I just being irrational or is this legit? Are we still getting used to each other and can we make this work? Oh wow, OP. Those are not red flags, just so you know. Those are crimson. And you're three months in? I mean, he's displayed all of this toxic behavior in just three months. It's ridiculous. The level of manipulation and gaslighting that this guy is managing towards you is unhinged OP. This is not healthy for you. It's already starting to make you feel kind of crazy because you're doubting if this could be actually okay behavior. It is not. He gives you an expensive gift that you never asked for and gets mad at you for not using it. He uses some kind of stupid indignation to control your schedule because he doesn't like you going to the gym at night. He plays the victim when you need to reschedule for a one hour because you overslept, because you were talking to him, oh come on. And all the times in his mind his imagination thought that you might have gotten him into a fight because of his behavior. And there is more but I really don't want to talk about this guy anymore because he sucks OP. Just break up with him, it's three months, it's not worth the pain. I mean just that passive aggressive episode of breaking up was torturous, just let him go OP.
Honestly, he sounds like a mid-season drama character from the OC. And what do you guys think about Opie's boyfriend and what would you do in Opie's shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Rainy Reminder says, You've been dating three months and have eight examples of him acting the fool, being jealous, getting mad for no reason, and one of them is a breakup. Yes, honey, yes. These flags are so red. Dump, dump, dump. Eshtive353 says, This is way too much drama for a three-year relationship, let alone the three-month one. This guy comes off as controlling a-hole and there's a lot of potential for abuse here in my opinion. Just move on. You deserve better than this. Slytherin Always or Slytherin Always 92 says, I stopped reading after four. Dump him. Don't question it, but move on. He's quite controlling and the fact that he didn't respect you after you said stop is a huge one. Especially when he went on to say it would look poorly on him if he got in trouble for it. Three months in, cut your losses and know you can find someone better. Endless Throwaway says, I'm sorry this is happening to you, but know that you have done nothing wrong. This is abusive and unacceptable behavior. What you're describing is what manifests from the controlling and explosive outbursts. By putting you into a state of constant fear and having you on edge, you can become consumed with the doubt of having to deal with that again and the feelings attributed to it. So you do everything to actively avoid, understandably. OP sounds like a truly toxic relationship for you and most definitely, at the very least, emotionally and psychologically abusive and damaging. I'd encourage you to first ensure your safety, then sever all ties with this person. Preferably do so with a witness present in a public setting. Before doing so, ensure you have all important documents and personal items out of any shared place. A healthy relationship is one in which two individuals can grow together but also have a sense of self independently of each other. They share a mutual respect for each other and love each other in healthy ways. You deserved, and anyone else reading this, to be loved in all those healthy ways, but this isn't it. Additional information from OP's comments. Being with him has me now questioning everything which I used to do so regularly and open. It asked sleeping in, going to the gym, grabbing lunch with a platonic single guy friend, etc. I find myself asking if he would be okay with this, if he would get upset if I did that. I also find myself constantly checking my phone because I worry if he texts me and I take too long before replying, if I was occupied at work, or I was having a conversation with someone else, or I was working out, etc. Or if he happens to call and I don't pick up in case he gets worked up and flies into a rage. Oh, and for the record, he's never been physically violent, but when he's mad, he gets really outraged and shouts to express himself. It really disturbs and upsets me, as I believe that things can always be resolved by calmly discussing and talking through issues to come up with a resolution, not yelling and losing one's temper. I'm supposed to go on a hike and lunch with a platonic guy friend next weekend, and even this has got me anxious as to whether Chavi would take contention with it when I tell him that I would also like to spend my weekend with another person, a guy more so. Okay, well the community is loud and clear telling OP to get the hell out of there, and OP didn't really give a clear inclination as to what she wants to do in her context, but we did get some more information. So now of course it's time to move on with the update to see how this story ends, but before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now, let's move on with that update. After making the post, I reevaluated the relationship and had a talk with Chavi. Against my better judgement, I decided to give him another chance. Anyways, I'll get to the incident which was the straw that broke the camel's back. Last Sunday, I inquired whether we could spend the coming Friday night together so we could get an early start to the weekend. He replied that he would let me know how his schedule worked with that. The following day, Monday, I received a dinner invite for Friday from a bunch of good friends. Since Chavi hadn't confirmed with me on his schedule yet, I assumed things were still up in the air with him, so I accepted the invitation. Then I informed Chavi that I would be doing dinner with my friends, so I would be meeting him a couple of hours later than I had initially suggested. He flipped out on me. He yelled and screamed at me on the phone, cursing me out and demanding to know who was so effing important I was going to meet them. He asked me if a frivolous dinner with mere friends meant more to me than spending time with my significant other. 
I responded that of course I valued my significant others, however there were other people I also liked to have in my life. He told me I could go on and date those people then. He went on about how I was incredibly disrespectful towards his time and that I was jerking him around. I told him that I didn't see how that counted as being disrespectful of his time since it was only Monday and the invite was for Friday. I was letting him know about the dinner way in advance so that he could plan his time for those couple of hours. It wasn't as bad as if I was pushing plans back at the very last minute or even cancelling on him. I told him that from my perspective, since he had yet to get back to me on his schedule, I had the impression that we weren't confirmed, hence I accepted the invite. I also told him that from my point of view, when I make plans with someone for the whole weekend and they push things back a couple of hours for whatever reason, it wouldn't be a big deal to me, so I didn't see why he was being so drastic. He then said to enjoy myself with my friends and that he hoped the dinner would be worth the cost of our relationship. I responded, okay, there's still some stuff that both of us have at each other's places though, so we're meeting up later this week to return things. OP's final update. Hi everyone, the exchange went smoothly. As per suggestion of all here, I went with a friend who's a semi-pro MMA fighter. Smiley face. Chavi seemed pretty upset and was being really nice to me and wanted to hug it out when we met. I grabbed my stuff, dropped his and noped out of there. P.S. I gave that $4,000 thingamajig back, not interested in keeping any remnants of him around or giving any possible reason for him to contact me again in the future. Thank all of you so much for your concern and advice. Lots of love, heart. Well OP, I'm gonna call this a very happy update because even though you did give him a second chance and thankfully nothing bad happened during that time, there was a straw that broke the camel's back and you acted on it and you got out of that relationship. So good for you OP, congratulations and here's wishing you all the best in the future. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. Now let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user JumpyConclusion4633. Why wasn't I at my desk? I'll tell you why. About 15 years ago, I worked in a large hospital for kids in the maintenance department. Our manager, let's call her Karen, was a major bitch. No one on our team liked her and we outwardly showed no respect for her after her constant harassment towards us in the two years she worked there. She would call us on the maintenance radios and be rude or tell the guys they were being incompetent. It was beyond micromanagement but also rude on top of it. She expected the maintenance guys to come do work at her house for free or would tell some of the hospital vendors she would guarantee the hospital contract if they did work at her house for cheap. She used to brag about this to me. Karen and I were the only women in our department of about 25 people. I was a mouthy 20 something year old and didn't care for her attitude and regularly would say, yeah sure whatever, and when she asked me to do things, I would do what she asked because it was my job, but I would have made a non-committal remark like that. One time she asked me to come to her house and help her pull down dead trees in her backyard since she was having a pool installed. I said no, mainly cause I wouldn't do it for someone I liked let alone her and pretty soon after she started treating me even worse than she did before. She had been trying to get me in trouble since then, such as CCing her buddy in HR on emails to me asking for the status of projects that I was working on and wanting my replies in writing. Fast forward 6 months, one of the maintenance guys and I were chatting in the office and I was 5 months pregnant with my first baby. She asked me to do something, I don't remember what, and I said, yeah, whatever, sure, I'll do that in a few minutes. And I turned back around to talk to my coworker. She is standing behind me and I hear her whisper, I wish I could slap the crap out of you. I can see my coworkers saw her say it too and I made no comment but I was shocked. I acted like I didn't hear her though. She left the office a minute later to do something. I get up and walk down the hall to the employee health department cause I am fuming and my heart was racing. Pissed. Also 5 months pregnant. The EH nurse has me lie down for a bit, take my vitals and write up a formal report. An hour later she sends me back to my desk as okay to continue working. When I log back in, I see an email from Karen with HRCC asking where I had been for the last hour as she called the office phone a bunch of times and I had abandoned my desk. 
So I emailed her back. I apologize for being away from my desk. When you said you'd like to slap the crap out of me, I was so upset I had to be calmed down and have my and my baby's vitals checked at employee health. They were concerned about my hostile work environment and wanted me to stay there for the full hour. I made sure to BCC her buddy in HR and all of HR, her boss and his boss to make sure everyone saw it. I was summoned to HR about 30 minutes later. I knew Karen hadn't seen my reply yet. This was the early 2000s and her computer was down in the office near me. They had me go home for the day and put me on administrative leave for three extra days. I came back to the office to see her desk had been emptied out and we never saw her again. Those guys in maintenance threw me the best baby shower ever three months later. Yikes, I guess Karen's rage didn't think you'd reply with that. Good for you, OP. Thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.